everybody my name is Karina and I want to show you how I color hair and skin I have this iPad and I use Procreate and the Apple Pencil I'll link everything in the description so you guys know exactly what I'm using so right now all I have is my line art and my base colors filled in already. I have all these layers. These are just base colors that I've chosen and maybe like for the hair I added some texture but that's it. I'm gonna start off with the hair almost always when I'm shading and highlighting I for shading I create a clipping layer onto the base layer so to make a clipping layer, so if this is my base layer, the hair, and I want to make a clipping layer, which means I can only paint on whatever I've colored here. So I make a new layer, and then to clip it, you make sure that new layer you just made is under clipping mask. So I already created one called shades here. And to shade, I make a shading layer and I call it. And I make it um, the layer mode by multiply. Multiply right there. And then I usually grab the base color of this one and then I shade onto it. So I'm going to show you an example of how I shade hair. So I just use this and your favorite brush. Right now, I'm using, for the shading, I have this like watercolor slash gouache brush, which I think Procreate has. So I just go into my favorite brush. Remember, on the multiply layer, I'm gonna zoom in. I've already decided the lighting to be kind of around her, like on both sides. Usually after I decide the lighting is, like for example, just ask myself like where would the darkness be or where would the light be? So right here at her forehead where the hair parts, I want to show that hairline, it's darker where it starts. So I'll go in and I'll start shading there. And like, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm kind of going for a soft shading look here. So that's kind of what I do. I just kind of choose, so like I'll press hard. This brush is pressure sensitive, so I'll press hard in the middle and then kind of let ease up. Like kind of ease up. Let me do that again. Undo. This is if your brush is pressure sensitive, so I'm gonna press really hard at first, and you can kind of see it's like super dark. So I did it really hard here, and then I'll lighten up the pressure to make it blend a little, so it's not too harsh. So this will give it like a soft, kind of soft kind of effect, and you can go back again pressing hard again so yeah it looks kind of basic right now but that's just kind of what I do throughout all of it so I'm just gonna quickly go through where I think it's gonna be dark like her hair roots here here I kind of just make loose strokes cuz that's kind of what hair is like coloring is like my favorite part so relaxing so some tricks I like to use is like if there's like an outward curl towards your light source I tend to kind of not touch it at all like here her hair is kind of like pointing towards like if you kind of think of like a piece of metal if you bent it hmm like if you had a little sheet of metal and you bent it kind of like this shape 
and if there isn't light hitting it, you would kind of like notice that it would be reflected right here, right at the, where it's bending. So I kind of try to just keep that in my head. I know hair is not metal, but I just kind of kind of keep that in the back of my head. All over, so right here I kind of have another bendy hair piece. So again, I leave this part like light and we'll highlight it later. Kind of like the empty space that you're not touching, we're gonna highlight it later, later with an overlay layer. The hair behind the head right here is always gonna be darker. It's kind of like it's farther away. So I just like to darken those. And sometimes if it's not dark enough, you can even like pick a different different color. So right now I have the base color hair selected, but you can kind of go darker or shape. So it gives like a darker effect. But only for like this part, because it's like kind of the darkest and maybe the roots here. And then to go back to the previous color, there's a little trick you can hold, tap and hold. But yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed through the rest. And I just use the same technique, so yeah, and then we'll get to highlighting. Right here, like I have my line here that I drew kind of like to shape the hair, like her hair's curling. So I kind of follow that with the shade, like as if this chunk of hair is overshadowing this chunk of hair. Then the pieces in the back are always dark. the shiny effect or the highlighty effect so I almost always use the base color to color on this overlay layer for the highlight and then I choose like like a pastel -y kind of color like blue or pink like this scene I kind of have like these constellations going on so I might add like harsh red harsh yellows at the corner just to give that light hard light vibe and make a new layer just to show example to so just set it to the overlay type and clip it again to the hair so i'll just pick the base layer again and with the same brush or airbrush a lot of people like to use airbrush so right now i'm on the base color hair and if i want like a really harsh light i'll just kind of press hard like sorry that was probably too hard And then like the edges of the hair. And all the parts, remember like the spaces that you left empty from shading. So right here would be the most reflected part. So just give a little soft, a little soft stroke. I would just do that all over. Okay, so I'm just going to speed through the rest. pinkish overlay color. And now for some blue highlights. I really like my colored highlight. 
I'm gonna be coloring the skin. So this is my base layer of the skin. And then I make a clipping layer on it. Then I set it to multiply. Just like how I did with the hair. And then I'm just gonna select the I'm just gonna select the base skin color. And this time I'm gonna use for the skin a Copic brush, which I found for free on the Procreate Resource website. And I love this one because it becomes really wide by the angle that I do it in. But the light source is kind of coming this way. So it's magical light all around her. I'm just gonna do like basic shading on her skin, nothing too crazy. Start with the ears. Shade her ear holes because it's darker there. Maybe press a little harder at the top. Because your ear like at the top of it, it's concave, so it kind of goes in. So it should be darker up there, I guess. What do I know about ear anatomy? Now with the forehead, so because she has like these bangs that kind of like go around, I like to just give them like a little like shading under them. So usually I'll have some shading like like a little bit at the root, and then like if I know there's something in front of her, then I'm probably gonna shade under it too. The shade like little like just a soft circular motion. And this brush is very like sensitive to pressure so just like what I did with the hair I'll press harder when I think I want it to be darker and then lighter to blend it out this piece of hair like I'll just kind of go press under it here too doing nice confident strokes or so you think then I'll do some here too right the edge of her face because most of human faces, they have kind of like a plane here, like a cheekbone plane. So I like to shade that. Here too. And I always love to shade like the eye bags. You give like a little like, like you just shade right under the eyelid. I don't know, I think it looks cool. I think it looks like dramatic. If you look in the mirror, I mean, I'm not going for like super realism or anything, but if you look in the mirror, like your eye socket kind of goes in here, or eyelid-ish. So you wanna like, like this triangle area. I like shading that part just to show that it goes in. crazy with the shading on the face and like I'll just keep a little small shadow because it's an object I'll shade like the bridge to the nose blending it like super quick I don't know if I like that shading or not and when I shade the nose I like shading this the in-between part right here, kind of dark, and then go light on the outside of the nose. I just think it's like a ball with a little shine right here. So sometimes I'll just take the brush and just go over her whole face. I know that's crazy, but I do, like really light. Just so it looks even. Heck. Almost always I like to put like a super dark contrasting shadow here. And her collarbones. Just like a little indent the collarbone goes in just to show. Her hands are kind of like on top of each other, so the next finger will have the previous's shadow, 
like so this middle finger like I would give like a little shadow right here and then like the top whenever there's like a bend like a little more shadow like on the bent top part just to indicate that it's bending bending inwards thumb is behind all the other fingers so I'm just gonna color that dark too so the rest of the video I'm just gonna speed up the shadows are just marked on where the bone structure is and I only have the shoulders to color left so I thought I could just speed this part up People like to duplicate it again like if you want a really harsh look see like that doesn't look, look so bad you might have to go back and like fix it a little or even change the hue like if it's too dark then you can go in the hue and kind of brighten it up a little and it still looks like harsher than earlier but like not too harsh like see that difference or like you don't even have to keep like you can duplicate it and then like erase parts of it off we're gonna do the highlights I'm just gonna use her base color again, highlight, and then like blue, and like light blue, light pink, like purple. So, there's always a highlight on the nose. So, love doing that. Maybe you can do one on like, the in, inside of her eyelid. Just make it pop, you know what I'm saying? And then the corners of her ears, because where the light's coming. So for the rest of the highlights, I kind of just finish her bridge of the nose and her cheekbones and like the edges of her ears and her shoulders and like the top of the knuckles. I think that's about it. Here I choose like a bluish highlight. decided to use uh, the soft airbrush instead of the Copic marker because I wanted a softer look and then I go in again with back to her base color then I eventually go back to the Copic brush for the rest of the skin Thanks for watching! Bye!